Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Watts. I'm an account manager here with Fender Consulting. I want to uh, welcome you to our second session of our summer webinar series. This is something we look forward to doing every year and we try to really um, focus on topics that might be useful to the different constituencies that we serve. So uh, individuals with disabilities, seeking employment, uh, referral service partners that collaborate with us to bring us great candidates for opportunities, colleges and universities. So whatever constituency that you might be uh, coming from or representing today, uh, we welcome you in, in doing that. And um, um, we're going to be talking today about one of my favorite topics, which is uh, social media best practices. Um, I'll give you a little bit about my background before we get started. I, I'm an account manager here, as I mentioned, with Bender Consulting. And a large part of what I do is to work with our employees so once they come on board. So once we have candidates that are successfully screened through our onboarding process and, and trained and brought into our all right, so while customers, I'm the person that kind of works with them on the other side of that to do workplace mentoring, to talk about um, you know, how to succeed in your job, and if, if there's any sort of struggle or any concern or questions, I help employees deal with that. So, so as employees are going through uh, that process, um, a large part of their career search has to do with tapping into different social media. Um, so, uh, but my background also is in communication. Um, so I do a lot of social media and, and web work in my day to day. So I'm thrilled to talk about this topic with you and share it with you, and hopefully, um, you know, either provide tips to benefit yourself or to benefit uh, the the populations that you're serving. So what I'd like to do is just kind of talk through uh, some of the concepts in our presentation. And then what is, at the end, uh, we will also offer a question and answer session so that people, and I really encourage you to take advantage of that and ask any questions that you might have. Uh, there's a chat feature, so uh, put your questions into the chat feature, and we will try to address those as, we're, as we uh, reach the question and answer session. So. Um, with that, I just kind of want to get started. Um, so for this webinar series, we've really tried to focus on how do we prepare students for the world of work, and in doing so, help them to establish a professional career brand. Because when you're looking for a job, and you're building your resume, and building your online profile, those things are all part of your your digital footprint and and your brand, what you are to the job market. So social media is, is a critical part of that. Uh, so before we kind of get started into the social media topic, which I'm, I'm very excited to get into, um, I just want to provide a little bit of background about Bender Consulting. So um, for those of you who may or may not be familiar with Bender, uh, we are an international leader in disability employment topics. We've, we've been in business since 1995. Bender Consulting was founded in 1995 to assist people with disabilities in aligning with competitive employment in areas like IT, finance, accounting, business, HR, really anything that our customers uh, come to us asking for. So we started out in the private sector mostly. Um, we have since expanded our business to include placements with the federal government. Um, so you'll see kind of both of those things in here. Our CEO and president, Joyce Bender, is a person living with epilepsy. Uh, so she is a person with disabilities. She actually had a life-threatening uh, accident when she had a seizure when she was at a movie theater in 1985, which resulted in not only you know the discovery that she had epilepsy, but because she took a fall during that process, uh, a hearing loss as well due to the fall. So she's a woman living with multiple disabilities. Um, she is the past chair of both the American Association of People with Disabilities and the National Epilepsy Foundation. So she really brings kind of that uh, national experience um, as well. 
Um, great. Oh, you know what? I don't think, thank you, Gerald, for letting me know. I don't think I ever uh, took over as presenter, so I will do that so you can follow along where I am. So if you look at the slide deck, um, I am on slide two, uh, for those of you who, who want to follow along. Uh, as I mentioned, Joyce uh, has been the chair of the uh, American Association of People with Disabilities and the National Epilepsy Foundation. Um, she has a weekly talk radio show, Disability Matters with Joyce Bender. It actually airs at 2 o'clock on Tuesdays if you're interested in watching it live on voiceamerica.com. All the shows are also captioned, um, uh, captioned and uh, provided on our website and recorded. So every show since she's been doing a show, uh, I, I think maybe since 2003, uh, is available on our website for you to listen to that. And I really encourage everyone to do that. Uh, it's a great resource. We have everybody, you know, business leaders, political figures, disability advocates. So really a valuable source of information. Um, a couple of things. Uh, she has represented the U.S. State Department on information exchanges related to disability employment. The first was in Panama. Uh, the second was in South Korea. And she's actually, this weekend, uh, returning to South Korea for an additional uh, disability information exchange. Um, so they're really looking for an expert on disability employment, and, and she was and we'll be traveling there again. Um, just for your information, and we can certainly address any questions you have about our customer or business model uh, when we get to the Q&A period. Um, you see there are some of our private sector customers as well as our federal government customers, everybody from uh, insurance corporations to media corporations, technology, defense contracting, uh, and then federal agencies. We have uh, the OPM shared list for people with disabilities, which you may have heard of. Uh, that is a resume repository that federal agencies can go to to hire individuals with disabilities for competitive jobs. Bender is the sole source contractor on that effort. We've also supported the NGA, uh, the National Geospatial Agency, as well as the National Security Administration and other uh, agencies as well. So. Uh, with that, I um, just want to say a few more words before we kind of launch into, but you'll see on slide three, um, it, this is our product line. Um, we have everything from uh, most of what we're going to be dealing with with you folks on is our talent programs area, which has a lot to do with our recruitment efforts, uh, our career to be program that provides the one-year work experience to uh, entry-level professionals seeking to enter the workforce, uh, our college partnership program, uh, our virtual career fairs, if anyone has attended those, and then our long-term disability services that we collaborate with Cigna uh, and others on to uh, provide uh, services for individuals seeking to return to work. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention kind of in the software solutions area, uh, because this is something that I'm involved in as well, is our iDisability training product. So this is a product that we rolled out in last year's uh, U.S. Business Leadership Network Conference. It's a series of uh, what is currently 20 modules, but will grow in the next year to at least 35 modules and continue growing from there, modules that can be integrated into existing learning management systems for companies that their employees can take. So we've been developing content on that. So those are just a couple. Uh, exciting developments, but of course we do consulting around disability employment strategy and also um, our focus on ability training and our vendor leadership academy for high school students with disabilities. So um, on to the social media here. Uh, I just want to highlight a couple quick learning objectives, actually three quick learning objectives that we're going to be attentive to today. Uh, we're going to talk about social media best practices uh, to maximize your career search results and how you can avoid uh, kind of the pitfalls of social media that might uh, damage your online reputation and how to create, finally, a strong LinkedIn profile and how to connect with companies, again, to maximize that as a career 
uh, research source. So, um, you know, for example, I, I have no problem telling you that um, I, I am a person with a disability. I'm, I'm I just turned 36 years old. So when I started searching for a job, um, LinkedIn was not a presence. So you know, you just did your resume and you handed out your resume and some of those things. So today, uh, LinkedIn is a very prominent source and tool for employees, employers, excuse me, and, and employees. Um, you know, to look for that next opportunity or that first opportunity. You know, people are really going out to look at people's LinkedIn profiles. So we'll just by the brief overview of how to do, uh, you know, things of that nature. So we'll also address. Um, okay, so social media best practices. So the first thing here is, you know, as I mentioned before, social media is something, your social media accounts is going to be something that uh, employers or potential employers review uh, when they are a part of your screening process. So inevitably a hiring manager, an HR professional, they're going to go out and Google you, they're going to go out and, and find your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Twitter. Uh, your Instagram, so so you just want to be aware of that, that those are being searched and that's part of, you know, frankly, your consideration of whether or not you uh, receive the job or the job offer. Um, so it's important, you know, as you're putting your resume together, include your LinkedIn profile as part of your resume, probably at the top uh, where you would traditionally list your email address, for example, might be a good um, way to do that. Um, Use an actual name, not your nickname or slang. So here's a perfect example of that. I have a friend right now, uh, because of her military service, a lot of times she will use, um, you know, not her actual name just so she can't be searched, which, which is fine and I understand that and I respect that, but, it, but if you are searching for a job and you want employers to find you and see you in for your social media to be an adequate representation of you, then um, you want to be using your actual name and not any nicknames. Um, again, we've said this before in other presentations, but I just want to say it again, using a professional email address. So you don't want to say like, um, you know, I, I love tacos at gmail.com, you want to use, again, your actual name, maybe a number that's associated uh, with you, you know, things of that nature. But keep it professional. Um, you want to keep your post uh, positive and engaging. So as they say, you want to contribute to the conversation. Make sure what you have to say is constructive and positive uh, and, and things that people want to read. What makes people walk away you know, with a very positive feeling about you and the things that you represent. And again, so, you know, m most of us are either people with disabilities or we re represent people with disabilities, so we want to use our social media presence uh, to promote professionalism, acceptance, and of course, always inclusion. Our, our space should be a safe space where people feel like they can go and consume information and get feel good about, you know, what they're reading and what you represent. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, with your social media, again, you want to use this as an opportunity, just like any other um, venue that talks about what you do. Your social media is like real estate. So you want to use it to detail your work experience, your volunteer experience, your technical expertise um, on those professional sites, you know, in a way that's easy to read and and uh, to the point and concise, but also lists everything you've done and gives a full representation of what you have to offer to a potential employer. Um, include interactive elements uh, to interact with the profile. So, for example, you know, as a communications person, I have developed many videos, especially around diversity and inclusion. Do you want to include those elements that, that again, are going to engage the user? make your profile stand out, you know, maybe it's an article that you contributed, something that you contributed to, so you want to make sure that you're including um, all that, but, but at the same time, you know, when you're working, make sure that whatever you list has been cleared for a kind of public view. So, 
So I might develop something at work, right? But but because of what we call intellectual property in in the workplace, you know, you can't just pull something from work and post it on your personal social media. You get, have to get permission to do that and to share that. So just make sure that you have that uh, before you share it on your on your personal uh, site. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the mistakes of social media. So we talked a little bit about the best practices, and, the, and that's great. And if everybody adhered to them, we would have no problems uh, with social media. I think the unfortunate truth is like social media is such a powerful and awesome tool um, that people can use to engage other people. And I, you know, I really think it's like an amazing experience, and it's a way that you can connect with people that you may not otherwise have the opportunity to do so. But I think uh, with that comes great responsibility and there are some pitfalls. So, you know, we definitely don't want to make this so a lecture situation, but we just want people to avoid uh, certain pitfalls in terms of, and avoid those mistakes so that your social media, again, can be the best representation of you as a candidate when you're out there looking for opportunities or engaging with volunteers. So um, don't put anything on, online that you wouldn't want the world to know. Again, the Internet is permanent, probably now so more than ever. So things can be screen grabs, saved, sent around, Snapchat. Those things don't actually go away. They're, they're a digital footprint somewhere. And, and so you want to make sure that anything you put on the Internet or online is, is not something that you wouldn't want the whole world to know. Right? Um, so don't post or share any suggestive images or photos. Right? And so we live in a, we live in a digital age, and today is actually, if you paid attention to the news, today is actually National Selfie Day. Um, so, so we all take a ton of photos and share a lot of photos, and again, that is fantastic, right? But, but again, those photos, you, you never know, the cameras are everywhere now with people's phones and things. So you just want to be careful as much as you can about the photos that you post and you share. You know, I'll share a personal experience. I had a friend of mine, uh, you know, she finished medical school and a uh, very close friend. And so I was looking at her Facebook and I said, you know, you're, you're a doctor now. You might want to look at these photos. You might want to go through them. And, and at first she said, what are you, what are you talking about? And, and then you could see that she kind of got into her photos and you kind of just heard her groan over, you know, because not only did she not necessarily put them out there, but, um, you know, people had tagged her in different things. So, so just be mindful of what people are posting, what you're posting, and kind of what your settings are in terms of that. Um, and then, of course, never, and this goes for everything, not just social media. This next point goes for life in general. Just never make homophobic, racial, sexist, or other offensive comments online, or really, frankly, anywhere. Um, because in the workplace, there's really just no place for that. And, and a lot of companies, to be honest, have a zero tolerance policy around any sort of hateful comments like that. I mean, to the point that if, if something comes out and something happens, there have been times that individuals have had to been released and not even had the opportunity to return to the building to collect their things. They just had to pick them up. So, so just you know, just avoid that in in any context, but especially online, because again, it never goes away. Um, and again, you just want to eliminate profanity because it's not the best. Um, it's not the best representation of yourself when you're creating your uh, professional uh, presence online because if that's how you talk online, people assume that's how you're going to talk at work. So just, again, eliminate profanity uh, from your social media. Okay. Um, again, this next few points are really important, but I wanted to hit on them um, don't make negative remarks about your employer online. This includes like any social accounts or blogs. You know, again, people can can find these things. And so I'm, I'm sure you heard in the news a few months ago that somebody made 
a comment about about a prominent figure, and somebody for, they worked with ended up tagging that person and said, oh, yeah, doesn't this person work in your organization? And that person ended up losing their job over a, a comment they had made on their personal, not on work time, on their personal social media account. So you just never want to uh, post anything that might uh, portray you in a light that isn't positive or, or portray you as uh, talking negatively about an employer because the assumption is if you talk negatively about one employer, you're going to do that across your employers or across your career, and it's just going to damage your online reputation and your ability to secure the next position. Um, you know, so I want to be a little bit careful about these next two. Um, you know, we are living in a very politically charged time, no matter what your political views are. Um, and I, I'm c coming to you live from Washington, D.C., so I can personally attest to this fact. You know, we just we live in a very politically charged time, and everyone is entitled to their own beliefs and opinions and their votes. That's what makes America, you know, the country that we live in, um, because you have the ability to have your voice heard. At the same time, you know, we just really need to be respectful. So I always tell people, you know, just avoid political posts altogether. You, you know, use your social media for other things, other topics. There's so many things to talk about uh, online, you know, things that you're doing in support of work or, you know, hobbies that you enjoy or ways that you're making a difference in your volunteer experience. Because you never know when you go to interview with a manager or the company, you never know. Their stance might somehow be different than yours, and so you don't, you just don't necessarily want to put that out there. Now, I recognize that, you know, at the same time, people are very passionate about what they believe, and again, I respect that very much. Um, but if you're going to post about political items, you know, make sure that your posts are informative, respectful, um, in the way that they present their language. We just want to have a respectful tone and, and a dialogue and discussion of understanding. And again, you know, don't engage in long rants online. And I actually have um, an instance where this happened to me, and I just did not really feel, you know, very good about it. So I, I was in the process uh, in my personal time uh, in helping a friend of mine to do a workshop on defying their label. So I was a speaker at this workshop, and I had invited a friend to the workshop. And she was interested in the event, but she couldn't go. And so she became friends with another person that was running an event who she did not know. So it was my friend became friends with this other person through social media. And then all of a sudden, I see that one of my the person who is my friend has gotten into a long rant with this other person who's a quasi business contact of mine because they're connected through this event. So I felt like here I had made my contact vulnerable to, you know, this long rant on her page. So you just don't want to put somebody in that position where where they don't feel comfortable. You know, of course, express yourself in social media as what it's for, but be respectful in your language and your tone in doing so. And just, you know, avoid arguments. Especially when you're looking for a job so that your social media Looks again. You want clean. You want engaging. You want a positive contributor to the conversation. Because if you're a positive contributor to the conversation online, you're a positive contributor to the conversation at work. That includes your projects. Um, so just, I know we have a few minutes left. I want to uh, go over a few things about creating your LinkedIn profile. So we have quite a few people online and. And so thank you and welcome to everybody uh, who joined today. This will be available. We'll tape it and make it available. Um, but for anyone who doesn't have a LinkedIn profile, this is the website for uh, LinkedIn.com. So you just need to uh, put your name and email address and register for an account. So this is where you go and you do that if you don't already have one. Um, the next slide, which is slide 13, list all the different things that you can include on your profile. 
Um, you know, it gives you a chance, kind of like your objective in your resume, to list a summary of what you're actually looking for. Again, you want a professional photo of yourself. Uh, take advantage of uh, National Selfie Day and snap a snap a professional looking photo of yourself. You know, make sure you detail your experience. That's where you can detail tasks, but also uh, the employers that you may have worked for and the locations where you supported them. Uh, your education. So all these are basic kind of resume elements. But what sets uh, LinkedIn apart is that you're able to list featured skills, and then other users that you've worked with can endorse you for those skills. And also, in addition to endorsing you for the featured skills, write endorsements of your overall performance and what it's like to work with you, which is extremely powerful and why employers go out and, and, uh, and look at that as a potential source. Uh, you know, again, you can make recommendations. You can talk about accomplishments. So any publications where you've been featured, any honors or awards you received that are professional in nature, organizations that you work with. So these might be business affiliations that you have, uh, you know, if you're part of an association for IT professionals or uh, public relations professionals, that's where you would list that, as well as your volunteer organizations, you know, that you might be uh, donating your time on a personal level, you'll want to list that as well. Any languages that you have, and then interests. So for example, um, I, have a, I have a significant interest in running, and I've done and been featured in some running articles. So that's part of my LinkedIn profile, even though it's a, it's a personal interest of mine. So um, those are just some of the things that you can include. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you go to LinkedIn, you can edit the different sections and, and put those in, that information into your profile. And, and you, I would suggest that before you start connecting with companies, which is kind of the next thing that we're going to review. Um, make sure your profile is completely what you want people to see, because you don't want companies to connect with you if you're a job seeker and your profile be only half finished. So uh, real quick here, um, and I just mentioned this, complete your profile uh, and include standout information before you connect with companies, because again, you want them to see the whole picture of you and everything that you have to offer. So I broke down, if you've been to the LinkedIn site, you, you know that there are kind of four key areas uh, that the traditional user will work in. Um, and that allows you to share articles, photos, updates, uh, and review information in your feed, kind of like your Facebook feed. Uh, my network connects you with former colleagues that you might, uh, again, connect with because when you're, when you're searching for a job, the best place to start is with people that you know. So either people that you went to school with or that you worked with before or that were maybe an instructor. You know, connect with those people and start talking to them about uh, jobs that they might know of. Also, um, the jobs area allows you to search for positions based on keywords and based on your location. You can actually uh, look around and see what's posted there. And there are actually a lot of great opportunities out there. If you go and you look, one of my jobs here is to help uh, our long-term disability customers in using that feature. So I know that there are a lot of great opportunities on the job board within LinkedIn. And again, uh, there is a message feature to allow you to connect with contacts and send kind of specific uh, messages to them and talk to them about what you're looking for. So all those things are critically important, um, and those are kind of the key areas of LinkedIn. Um, again, so at this point, you want to try to search for companies and connect with companies. So first step again, uh, search for people in your network that you know and start building your network. And then find jobs based on the subject matter you're interested in or the location that you're looking to work. Um, Review posts on related topics, so there's going to be articles that come out that might be relevant to the type of job that you're seeking. Uh, follow companies with position, positions of interest. Companies like to know that you're following them. They like to know, again, that you're engaged in the conversation and you see what they're doing. You know, so that can help you as you're seeking out opportunities. Uh, join groups that are focused on 
uh, professional subject matter of interest. So if you go to my LinkedIn profile, for example, I'm involved in communications groups, and then I'm involved in disability advocacy groups, not only in the U.S., but globally. So, um, and then uh, connect and respond promptly to recruiters. So there's the messaging feature, and sometimes you'll have recruiters reach out to you, or you'll, you'll want to respond with a specific poster of a job, and you can use the messaging feature to do that. What I've done here is provide you just an example of what each of those sections looks like across the top. I think where I actually am um, is in the group section. Uh, so you can see there's different groups to join if you search you know, based on your topic area. Um, so I'd encourage you to do that as well. Um, I know I went kind of quickly through that section, but I want to be mindful of folks' time. And I want, I'm going to leave my contact information here as well. But I also want to just see, do we have any questions of people that might have questions about any of uh, the things that we discussed today, either about social media or creating an effective LinkedIn profile? Again, you know, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat feature. Um, I'm happy to answer those, any that you might have. Um, again, I'll leave my contact information here, too, if you'd like to reach out to me separately. Um, but we want to give people just a second to ask any questions that you might have. Okay, well, I want to be mindful that you know we're, we're past the hour. Certainly, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I really appreciate that everyone took the time to do that. And again, we're going to have a session uh, in July. Uh, so watch for that um, invite to come out. We'll have a month. I believe it's actually on the uh, July 26th, if I'm correct, uh, the anniversary of the ADA. So. Um, Come back to us, join us for that. Uh, we will have another topic for you as part of our summer series. And again, we appreciate um, you and would, would look forward to any feedback that you might have. Please feel free to reach out to me on my uh, email address there. And uh, thank you very much for your time and attendance. All right, have a nice day, everybody.